Welcome to the video for C3.3.1 where we're going to look at redox reactions. So just to start, pause the video and see if you can answer these three questions. Okay, so first one we had to do was identify the reactants and products. So it's saying when magnesium burns in oxygen. So those two are our reactants. And it makes or forms magnesium oxide. So that's our product. So if we were to write, so that's our bronze done. So our silver, write a word equation. So when you write a word equation, you have an arrow going from left to right. And you write your reactants on the left. So we've already said that that's magnesium and oxygen. And then on the right hand side of the arrow, we have our product, which we've already said is magnesium oxide. Right, so that's our silver done. Right, write a balanced symbol equation for this reaction. So we need to look in the periodic table. The chemical symbol for magnesium is Mg, remembering that the first S is capital and the second one's lowercase. Now, oxygen is a bit more difficult. So the chemical symbol we can find from the periodic table is O, but there are various diatomic elements, and that means they come always come as twos. So we have Nitrogen always comes as N2, oxygen always comes as O2, hydrogen always comes as H2, and then all of group seven. So bromine, chlorine, fluorine, iodine, etc. always come as twos. So that has to come as O2. And when we're writing the formula here, so magnesium oxide is an ionic compound. So magnesium, if we find it in the periodic table, is group two. And because it's group two, it's always going to form Mg2+, plus because it's got two electrons in the outer shell, so it loses those to, to have a full outer shell. So that's going to be Mg2+, plus, and oxygen is in group six, so it's going to gain two electrons and become O2-. minus. So because we've got 2 plus and 2 minus, the charge on both is the same. Therefore, you just need one of each. So the chemical formula of magnesium oxide is just going to be MgO. So that's our symbol equation, but it's not balanced. So if I look over here, I've got two oxygens. So I need to have two oxygens on the right hand side as well as the left hand side. And I can't change the chemical formula because if I wrote... MgO2 would be balanced, but that would be a different chemical. So we can't just change that. So the only place I can put a number is in front of the chemical. So that makes it two oxygens, which is good, but it now means I've got two magnesium. So I need to do on the left hand side the same. I need to put a two there. Okay, so that's our starter done. So learning objectives for today, you need to be able to describe what a redox reaction is, explain reduction and oxidation in terms of electrons, and then hopefully write some half equations to represent oxidation and reduction. So what is oxidation and reduction? So you might be able to tell by the, the start of the name, it gives you a clue that it's to do with oxygen. So there's, there's two definitions of oxidation and reduction that you need to know. One's in terms of oxygen, which was the original definition, and the other one's in terms of electrons, which is what we use more commonly now. So the original idea was oxidation was the gain of oxygen and reduction was the loss of oxygen. So if we look at our reaction in our starter it, um, and try and identify whether this is oxidation or reduction, you can see we've got oxygen on the left hand side. So the magnesium is gaining, sorry, is gaining oxygen. So because it's gaining oxygen, it's going to be, so magnesium is gaining oxygen which means it's oxidation. Okay, so I'll just do a couple of worked examples, two simple ones and then two more complicated ones. And then you've got an assignment on Teams to have a go at, which is the identifying oxidation reduction. So let's look at these two simple. So on the previous slide, we said, I'll just write this here so we don't forget, oxidation is the gain of oxygen and reduction is the loss of oxygen. So if we look at this first example with copper, 
So the copper on the left-hand side doesn't have oxygen and it does on the right-hand side. So the copper is gaining oxygen. So therefore, this reaction is oxidation. And if we look at the second example with magnesium oxide to give magnesium plus oxygen, so the magnesium oxide is losing oxygen. So that means it's reduction. So there are simple cases where it's just oxidation and just reduction. But then we can have more complicated examples, such as displacement reactions, where you've got one chemical being oxidized, so undergoing oxidation, and one being reduced, so it's undergoing reduction. So if we look at these more complicated examples here, so if we look at the copper oxide, it's copper oxide on the left hand side and it's just copper on the right hand side. So that is losing oxygen. OK, so because it's losing oxygen, it's being reduced. And the potassium on the left hand side has got no oxygen, but it has got oxygen on the right hand side. So that is gaining oxygen. So therefore, it's being oxidized. And then the second more complicated example, you can see the magnesium on the left hand side is turning into magnesium oxide. So it's gaining oxygen. So it's being oxidized or it's undergoing oxidation. And the iron is losing oxygen. So therefore, it's being reduced or it's undergoing reduction. So pause the video and have a go at the assignment on Teams, which is self-marking so it will tell you what you've got right and wrong. Right, so we can also look at oxidation in terms of um, electrons. So for this, you have to learn the expression oil rig. So oil rig is a useful way of remembering that oxidation is loss and reduction is gain when we're talking about electrons. So pause the video and copy down that phrase. Right, and you need to be able to recognize oxidation reduction when we've got electrons that are involved. So if oxidation is loss of electrons, if we wrote a chemical equation out, if something's losing electrons, the electrons are going to be on the right hand side of the equation. If something's being reduced, then you are gaining electrons, so the electrons are going to be on the left hand side of the equation. So if we look at these two examples here, copper two plus plus two electrons to give copper. So the electrons are on the left hand side of the equation. So therefore, the copper two plus is gaining electrons. And because it's gaining electrons, this is an example of reduction. So the copper two plus is being reduced. And if you look at the second example, the electrons here are on the right hand side so you're going from 2Cl minus to give Cl2 plus two electrons so the electrons are on the right hand side so this chlorine on the left hand side is losing electrons and because it's losing electrons that's oxidation so the Cl minus is being oxidized Right, so before we do the writing half equations, if we just pause the video and have a go at the second team's assignment, which is to do with the electrons and identifying oxidation or reduction based on the electrons. And then restart this video. Right, so this is the most difficult bit. We need to write half equations. So in order to write half equations, we need to do a three-step process. So we work out the charges for each species in the equation, split the equation in two halves, and we can ignore any spectator ions when we do that. And then we need to balance each half equation by balancing the number of each species and balancing the charges with, by adding electrons. So best thing here is to do an example. So I've written the instructions at the top so we can do it. So the first thing we need to do is work out the charges for each species in the equation. So on the left hand side, the magnesium and the oxygen are just elements, so they've got no charge. So we just need to work out what the charge in here is. And we did this as part of our starter. 
So we said magnesium's in group two, so it's going to be Mg2 plus, and oxygen's in group six, so it's going to be O2 minus. If you can't remember those rules, you need to go back and have a look at how the charge on an ion refers to which group number it's in. So you need to look at the ionic compound lesson. So once I've, I've now worked out the charges for each species, so I can split the equation into two halves. So there are no spectator ions in this one. It's a simple example. So by this, I'm just turning the magnesium into Mg2+. And I'm turning the O2 into O2-. So when I do this, so I've split the equation into two halves. And now, so I've done one. And I've done two, so now I'm going to do three. So for each half equation, I'm going to balance the number of each species. So I've got one magnesium on the left-hand side and one on the right, so that's okay. And then balance the charges with electrons. So on this side, I've got a charge of zero. And on this charge side, sorry, the right-hand side, I've got a charge of two plus. So electrons are negative. So I always add electrons to the most positive side. So the positive side is the right-hand side. So to get from two plus to zero, I need to add minus two, which is two electrons. So it's going to be Mg to Mg2 plus plus two electrons. So this is one of my half equations. And the electrons are on the right hand side. So we are losing electrons. So that's my oxidation half equation. Now I need to look at the other one. So First thing I need to do is balance the number of each species. So I've got two oxygens there. So I need two oxygens on the right hand side. Now I need to be careful when I'm balancing my charges because I've got an O2 minus ion, but I've got two of them. So the charge on the right hand side is four minus and the charge on the left hand side is zero. So now I need to add the electrons to the most positive side, which is the left hand side. And to go from four minus to zero, I need to. Um, add four electrons on the left hand side. So it's going to be four electrons plus O2 to give two O2 minus. So this is my other half equation. So this is my reduction. That's reduction because gaining electrons because the electrons on the left hand side. Okay, now you should be able to have a go at the uh, worksheet on Teams and then check your answers on the mark scheme, which is also on Teams.